Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Tonight we're going to talk about two quick tips in Orca Slicer. The first one being fuzzy skin. Um, fuzzy skin is a great little way to add some texture to your 3D printed parts and it is a, a nice way of actually hiding layer lines in your seam and all that good stuff. So while it's not applicable to every single part that you print, um, for some parts, especially functional parts like this one in particular, it does wonders and makes the part look a little less 3D printed. Uh, the second feature we're going to talk about is poly holes. So poly holes is a thing that's been around for a long time, um, but it's not a widely used feature in a lot of slicers, but it is an Orca slicer. So if dimensional accuracy of 3D printed holes is important to you, like this little tiny guy is for my particular part, um, then rather than play with XY hole compensation or, or designing the hole bigger to account for the natural sort of undersizing of holes that happens in the FDM process, then poly holes is a great way to knock this out for you. Uh, so stick around, like, and subscribe, and we'll jump right into it. Thanks. Okay, so fuzzy skin. Here's how we enable it and tweak the settings and all that good stuff. Um, over here, under your processes, on the Others tab, uh, if you scroll down here to the Special mode, just underneath where your time-lapse settings is, is, you'll have fuzzy skin. Now, by default, it's set to none. And when you select here, you've got a couple of different options. You've got contour, contour, and holes, and all walls. For this particular example, I'm just going to use contour. And by default, it gives you some settings to play with. So skin point distance and skin point thickness. Now, let's just slice this so you can see what happens to it with just the default settings in there. It is a semi-rough texture that happens by default. Um, I would say it's similar to like a 60 grit sandpaper or something like that. I mean, it's not going to like rake skin off your arm or anything like that, but it's a semi-rough texture. Now, I know that for my needs, for my part, I wanted a, a texture that was a bit more subdued and a little bit more subtle, but still did the job of hiding layer lines uh, and hiding the ZC. So I figured that um, uh, after some playing and some testing and tuning and stuff like that, that really a 0.4 distance with a 0.1 skin thickness was what did it for me. This is what floated my boat. It's, uh, it's, it's a lot more subdued. Again, as I've randomized the seam on my part. So basically all these little white dots that you would normally see up as like imperfections in your layer lines on a smooth, quote unquote, smooth part um, are now all hidden by the texture. So it's a great way to do that. But the, the way that you think about these two particular settings is this, your skin point distance is, if we were to actually roll this up, and just look at this from a from a, a distance traveled perspective. Every 0.4 millimeters of travel in this case is going to deviate, right? So your nozzle is going to jitter back and forth no more than 0.1 millimeters on average. And it's going to randomize that for each layer that it does that going all the way up and down the print. So again, you can tweak this and say, well, I, I want to keep it at 0.8, but I really want a heavy texture and I want you to deviate up to a half a millimeter. So if we re-slice this now, you'll see it's a much heavier texture at that point. Um, so that's how you can tweak and tune and play with and get the right settings you like. Again, for my particular needs, I wanted something subtle. So subtle to me was, you could even leave it at a 0.8 millimeter and say only deviate something small like 0.1 millimeters. And you get a nice, nice little subtle texture around the part. So that's fuzzy skin. That's how you apply it. Um, and, uh, and now let's move on to poly holes. Okay, so poly holes. Here's why you might want to use poly holes. So uh, again, if like if the the dimensional accuracy of the holes you design is a very important to you, um, and you know in a 3D printed part, right, in an FDM 3D printed part, we're always going to have to deal with a little bit of shrinkage, right, where the hole is going to print undersized. So in those particular cases, you're going to have to do some playing around. You're either going to have to go in and tweak your design and make the hole a little bit bigger to account for that or you're gonna to have to come in here and play with XY hole compensation, something along those lines. Before you go play with those things, why not try converting those holes to poly holes? So in this case, I've got a, a metal post that has to get press fit into these holes for these inserts that I use. Um, and when I converted over from my Ender 3s, which finally ended up dying, and I started printing on my A1, the A1 prints beautifully, but it was closing up all of these holes. Um, and so, Again, I started doing this XY hole compensation and redesign thing and just happened to sort of find this convert holes to poly holes. And I'm glad I did because it solved my problem. I could I stopped testing at that point and everything just works. The holes are printed perfectly. It presses fit onto the post just fine, no problems. And I'm 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 all done 
that problem's in my rear view mirror, thank goodness. Um, so if we turn that off and we just slice normally, right, we see that it's going to try and print something that is just a round hole. And we know, right, we, everyone knows that holes that are FDM printed are, are largely going to be undersized to some degree, right? And your printer is way better at printing straight lines than it is at printing curved lines. Um, and so if we convert holes to poly holes and re-slice, you can now see that in this particular case, it has converted that hole into, a, into essentially the pentagon. Uh, and it is drawing straight lines around the holes and the edge of the filament is now touching the outside you know, wall radius of that hole. And then is twisting that for every layer down that it goes. So if we roll this layer up and down, it is, it is essentially just rotating that twist all the way around. And so with that, since your printer can print straight lines a lot more accurately than it can curved lines, you now have a dimensionally accurate hole. Now, if you've got an even smaller hole, so in this case over here, this hole is about 0.8 millimeters in diameter. So it's going to do a triangle instead of doing something like a pentagon or a hexagon or something like that. But the bigger the hole is, the more straight lines you're going to have running around it. And, but the principle is still the same. It is using the straight line and the edge of the filament to essentially touch the edge of the hole. And then it's going to rotate that all the way up and down your layers so that when you press in your part or do whatever, you've got enough surface contact points to keep the thing pressed in place. So this was perfect for my scenario. This solved my problem and I, hopefully it solved yours too. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks a lot.